Hi there, you are watching a video of shell and tube heat exchangers for industrial plants. There are different ways to support pressure vessels, depending on numerous factors, location, space available, uh, process, operation, etc. The usual practice to support shell and tube heat exchangers is by means of two saddles. A horizontal pressure vessel supported on saddles acts like a simple supported beam with the following considerations. Loading conditions are different when the vessel is fully or partially filled. Stresses are a function of the support angle of the saddles. The loads generated by the vessel's own weight are combined with other loads. Experience indicates that using a saddle with an angle of 60 degrees between its supporting ends and the center of the heat exchanger, and with a plate of 9-10 mm thickness, there is enough saddle to support an exchanger up to 25 tons of weight, enough for the common cases. The height of the saddles will be the minimum possible, to avoid too much height in the pipelines. The location of the saddles is a fundamental aspect of the design process for this type of equipment. There are numerous publications and recommendations about the location of the saddles. It is advisable to start the design of the heat exchanger supported by beams of two saddles, placed in such a way that the loads on each of them are approximately the same. At the same time, the support angle of the saddle used to support the shell and tube heat exchanger is normally 120 degrees. After locating the saddles, the shell should be verified against overstresses. This can be verified as per LP thick methods or by means of finite element analysis. Depending on the type of exchanger and project requirements, there are different configurations and designs of saddles to support this type of equipment. Next, mostly used configurations will be shown. Saddles are basically formed by five fundamental elements as shown in the figure. Reinforcement pad, ribs, base plate, anchor bolts, and the web. Through good engineering practices and numerous lessons learned, it is customary to design saddles according to job specifications and customer standards. Depending on the dimensions of the equipment, the configuration of the saddle to support the vessel is chosen. The standard shown below applies to most pressure vessels supported by saddles. However, each of the elements must be checked. Once the configuration and dimensions of these elements has been determined, it is necessary to verify the stress levels induced by the design loads. These elements are verified using the principles of classical mechanics, material resistance, failure theories, etc. Simplified methods can be found in different publications, adapted to the configuration of this equipment. Components that should be verified are the web thickness, the base plate and the anchor bolts.
One of the most important aspects of the design of saddles for horizontal vessels is the forces induced in the shell. To check the tensional state of the shell, normally the thick method is followed. Thick's work to determine stresses in the shell of pressure vessels gained such relevance that it was adopted and published by the ASME code for pressure vessels. A methodology for the determination of the stresses in the shell and heads of a horizontal pressure vessel supported on saddles was first published in 1951 by L.P. Sick. Saddles supported horizontal cylindrical vessels are under the following loadings and stresses. Bending, longitudinal stress, tangential shear stress, and circumferential compression and bending stress. If the results of six analyses show that the stress level in the shell is higher than the allowable, good practices to solve this situation are the following. Increase the support angle to 150 degrees. Return to 120 degrees design move the saddles closer to the heads, this way the stiffness provided by the heads is used. Keep the saddles closer to the heads, increase the angle of support up to 150 degrees. Return to the original location of the saddles and place stiffening rings in the plane of the saddles. A pressure vessel operating at high temperature would suffer a thermal expansion. To absorb this displacement, one of the saddles, the opposite from the main nose's location, preferably, should be left free to move. The free saddle must be provided with slots instead of holes for the anchor bolts. The length of the slots should be determined according to the magnitude of the expected displacements.